And welcome back to LA Fish Guys, part three of retrofitting the LED lighting system over Scott's big 500 gallon reef tank. We're cutting some plastic. It's better blades to be using for this job, but. Especially without goggles. Yeah, especially without goggles, that's right. So... Just kidding. And the plastic I'm referring to is FRP, fiberglass reinforced plastic. These plastic panels will be attached to the inside of the canopy area above the top of the aquarium. And if you remember from the previous part, we were using a template that we were tracing out the holes for the air duct as well as the pulleys. Well, you can now see that Scott's using that template and transferring those cutouts over to the plastic so he in turn can cut the holes out of the plastic and those panels will then fit in with minor modifications. And as you can see, Scott carefully and skillfully cuts out those various notches and holes. And in addition to calculating where the notches and cutouts should be, there's also the fact that will it fit through the doors and the current canopy opening? And it does appear as though we've calculated correctly and been able to get the panel through the opening into the canopy above the aquarium. Now let's see how well we did in getting it to fit all those notches and holes. One thing I forgot to do was the pull for the pipe. Well, I guess we were concentrating so much on the bulkheads and pulley holes that we forgot the line that comes from the filter system below. All right, we're looking good. We've got one more little notch to make at the bottom for our piece of PVC here and uh, be ready to rock and roll on this thing. Feeling pretty confident with our ability, we'll go ahead and slide the long panel into the canopy area. All right. Part one. So we got the little hole and we got these little pins. That should right the hole there. The pins he's referring to are plastic. They have a flared head on them. And once pounded into the plastic or the hole itself, the flared head acts as a moisture barrier. The flared plastic head or the additional washer allows the plastic to be held in much firmly by the nail or the plastic spike. And now with one end panel and the long side into place, we'll go ahead and put the third panel in. In addition to acting as a moisture barrier, the FRP also acts as an aesthetic. It makes for an attractively clean environment above the aquarium. Being white, it also acts as a reflective surface. And that in turn, theoretically, allows for more light to penetrate into the tank. And with a notch cut out in the original panel to accommodate the return line from the filter system, we can go ahead and put that panel in place and begin to secure it as well. Looking good. Last thing to do will be run a bead of silicone down there, make that little seam go away. My name's Jim Stein. I'm with MyFishTank.com. I'd like to take and show you the advantages of a clear-for-life acrylic aquarium. 
in a glass aquarium, the top is typically completely open with a couple of independent lids that you can lift out of the way. Other than some support structures, the top of the tank on a glass tank is typically completely open. Whereas on an acrylic tank, for structural integrity, the top panel is a solid top panel and the openings are cut out from that panel itself. Add a new and exciting feature to your Jelly Aquarium display. LED color changing mood lighting. Developed using energy saving LED ribbon technology, this lighting upgrade includes a handheld remote control that has three settings, seven individual mood colors, a slowly rotating rainbow of colors, and a fast beat discotheque effect. All right, so uh, I think we mentioned how long the other pulleys were hanging down. I've had to go out and get some uh, eye hooks here. What we're doing is we're cutting them and opening them up so that we can just hang the pulley from the hook. They make some open ones, but unfortunately the open ones are a lot longer, and uh, that doesn't do me much good. And along with the new eye hooks and pulleys, we'll need to drill some new holes for those eye hooks. So we had holes there before, but the newer pulleys are larger diameter and uh, they'll end up having the wires too far out on the rack, so moved them over a couple inches. With the four holes re-drilled and relocated, as well as the two new holes in the brace in the center, we can go ahead and tighten up those eye loops with the pulleys hanging from them. All right, so uh, this next step will be to get our pulleys up in the closet next to the tank. Get those in. Cables? We can bring the rack. Cables? No, uh, pulleys first. Thing. Oh, yeah. So in addition to replacing the four plus adding two new pulleys above the top of the tank, we've also got two we need to place in the closet. Good thing I'm a little guy. Next to the tank. So in case you didn't notice, if you look up here, I had two pulleys before. We're going to use a single double pulley instead of the two pulleys. It'll uh, keep things a little cleaner. It'll also keep the cables closer together and more even. So I'll remove four, pull four pulleys and eyes and replace it with two. The pulleys in this closet serve as the 90 degree point where the cables, which are horizontal up to that point above the top of the tank, then make that 90 degree turn to come down to the winch itself. Jim, would you hand me one of those pulleys? And as you heard previously, there were four separate pulleys with four cables inside there. We'll still continue to run four cables through there, but in this particular case, it'll create a cleaner arrangement. So while Scott stands on top of a ladder inside a 24 inch wide closet, attempting to remove and then replace the pulleys and the eye loops at the top of that closet, we'll start making the cables, the new cables that'll support the new light rack for the LED lighting system above Scott's big 500 gallon aquarium. So make it a point to come on back for part four. All right, so now we've got all our pulleys in place. Next part of the project, making cables. <laughs> 